Namaste, angels. First of all, thanks so much for the continued prayers. This prayer works. You know, it's that card we always get. Um, may any and all barriers between we beings of the light and the paradise our source has promised us continue to collapse and fall away in all aspects across all dimensions, all time, and all levels all levels of consciousness and existence into infinity and beyond. Amen. Um, I wanted first to mention some of the people that I watch um, on YouTube when I get a chance to watch, if I get a chance to watch some of the people that I feel um, a sense of warmth, warmth and authenticity from, you know, genuine light. So I've mentioned before already um, that when I get a chance to watch astrology, and he does readings too, um, but he talks a lot about astrology and is really knowledgeable about it, in my opinion, and I guess, you know, the opinion of everybody else, um, you know, who, to which subscribes to him is uh, Scarlet Moon. And he also does these like retreats and things, I think in Washington, it's the state of Washington. I'm not sure. But anyway, I've, I've included a link at least once before to his page because I had mentioned something, you know, some bit of astrology that that's where I got it. You know, otherwise this is the astrology that I give to you is stuff that just came into my head and then I would verify it on like a government website, um, you know, or something like that, which is public and for everyone. Um, but yeah, if it's, if it's somebody's, somebody's work, I'm not going to, you know, not, uh, say that I'm not going to try to claim somebody else's work. Um, certainly that's not my style. Um, so Scarlet Moon. I've mentioned soul before, S-O-L, uh, intuitive tarot for unique souls, S-O-U-L-S, and, you know, the warmth that I get from him, authenticity that I get from him, the fact that he and I both went to Lincoln, al although not at the same time, I'm, I'm older, it seems, um, we both majored in biology at Lincoln. Uh, so I'm sure all of that means something. Uh, Louisiana Lou, I mentioned the other day, but I'll go ahead for those that didn't hear it and those that uh, are new. Uh, again, she does, you know, general readings. And, you know, I think for the month and for one, either one for the month for general and one for the month for love. She may do them both together now that I think about it, you know, but for each sign, each astrological, astrological sign and probably specials and stuff too. She does. Uh, yes. Ah, Agatha from psychic consultants, because these are people that if I, believed somebody could read me, I would go to myself. And the reason I don't believe somebody could read me is because nobody could read Isis, but thought. But I am thought. I mean, as are you, but at my level, I'm thought. So I can only read myself. And that was one of the things that helped me to get to the fact that you know, we were all the horsemen other than the dream that I had of, of the three horsemen. Um, you know, this, this other thing of Isis only when Osiris wasn't around, only trusted thought to help her with anything. She did most things by herself. So that's what I have to do. Um... So, 
that's what you guys will have to do in the instances of people that are, you know, people over whom you have a higher elevation. And that's why I always say, and Archangel Sandalphon always says in the unity card to seek out like-minded people because somebody at your vibration could help you. Somebody higher than your vibration could help you. Um, somebody close to your vibration could help you, although you're still going to have to do some yourself. But somebody at a lower vibration than you can't do anything for you. And that's not necessarily negative. You know, even beings of the light, we, we elevate at different, you know, at varying speeds and levels. So that's not a slight against anyone. It, it just is what it is you know, for the time being, it could all change. In fact, I, I, you know, I believe I expect, um, you know, it'll change with me and, you know, I guess thereby with you all, with our children, I think they may, it's possible that they'll be more elevated, the new children, because those are the Christ consciousness. You know, so Mary, they call her the queen of angels, but Jesus is the Christ, right? Her her son, not her. Although things are, you know, being done a little different now. So I'm not sure about this. Things are being done a little different now that in that at the moment, I'm like all three. And the reason I'm like all three is because, of course, Earthbound Osiris um, will also be like me and like you guys. Um, all three horses, but he, you know, he's included in the people that didn't elevate as fast as me. And what's the reason for that? That's because Isis was first. Isis was the first being. Isis was the first everything and nothing. So that's why the feminine energies among us are first or have been first to begin to awaken and ascend. Now, how did I get all that, get to all that when I was supposed to be talking about Agatha? That's because one of, I got two readings um, the, from other people, this whole journey. Um, and I, you know, I've gone on to recommend them both to other people. One is Ascended Stars, but I, I don't see much from her. So I don't know if she's still, you know, in this quote unquote business, so to speak. And the other is Agatha of Psychic Consultants. And Spirit had been talking to me a lot and beginning to tell me who and what I was a lot. But it was all new and coming so fast. Again, oh, as a matter of fact, today's the 10th. Today is my three-month anniversary of being on YouTube. Um, so I elevated like at rapid speed. It was like, it was like God said, like, somebody go wake ISIS up because this is stuff isn't working. <laughs> you know, like, we, we go get her. And from there, it just like spiraled. So I go from being asleep like everybody else, you know, to an extent at least, you know, I've always been sort of extra different, even among people who were different and, you know, explaining things to them, super, super impartial and, you know, making peace between enemies and things like that by, you know, helping them to understand both perspectives or all perspectives of a situation and so on and so forth. So I've always, I've always been, I guess, slightly more conscious than most of uh, whom was around me. Um, but this was still all new and different and I guess kind of scary too at that point. Uh, you know, what do you say to hearing voices, first of all, and then to hearing voices like, you know, you're the high priestess, 
what, what does that even mean? So I went to Agatha and we had a reading and even she got to a point where she was like, this is, you know, one of, if not the most like difficult reading I've ever done. She was like, spirit is saying, you're the high priestess, go be the high priestess. And, and like, and that you, you know that already. And I'm like, whoa, okay. Still not knowing what does go be the high priestess mean. They told me soon after that. Um, but anyway, I adore her um, and the others that I mentioned. And if I didn't mention somebody, that doesn't necessarily mean anything in either. That those are just, These are just the people that have come to mind right now. I also like um, Mary from uh, Angels Love and Light. And there's another older woman. Um, I think her channel is called Simply Reiki. And she does a weekly, a weekly angel card reading of like three cards. But, you know, her voice is very calming and things like that. Oh, and this guy, uh, James Him Mitchell, H-I-M-M. -M. So if you type in James, H-I-M-M, -M, Mitchell, I think it's M-I-T-C-H-E-L-L. -L. He does weekly angel card readings. Sometimes he does Lenormand readings. And he, he explains, so it could be helpful to any of you that are interested in tarot. And I would only ask that, you know, even in watching these, especially if it's based on my suggestion, you know, if you don't watch them already, that you keep in mind what we've talked about and the additional meanings um, that cards have specifically for divine unions so that you don't see something and freak out, you know, necessarily, um, or become concerned unless it's something that, you know, you know, from the twin flame readings that it is something, you know, about which maybe you should be concerned and try to turn it around before it comes, you know, to fruition. Because again, tarot is, tarot is like a cautionary tool you know doesn't have to happen doesn't have to you know that's the negative stuff not I mean some of it does some of it is tower some of it is chariot you know and there's nothing we can do about it that's the universe but some of it is within within our control and we can change that fate you know if we're if we remain conscious of what you know we were of what we were forewarned you know so we can say okay I'm not going to be the four of cups Oh, I'm supposed to be the seven of wands. So normally I might go off, but let me f fall back on this one. Things like that. Okay. I didn't even plan to go into all of that. I'm not sorry that I did though. So where am I starting? Of course I have, as usual, I have a ton of notes. I think I'm starting with this morning even though the other notes are from earlier because it's stuff that I thought I was going to be able to do yesterday. So this morning I was thinking, were my gifts showing yesterday? <laughs> Particularly the time jumping one over which I, I haven't manifested control as I've mentioned before. Um, but I feel like I may have gone over the song Jesus Walks and perhaps other portions of my story twice, like exactly the same. I don't know. I, I may not have. I haven't had a chance to. Um, Jesus Walks 2, not Jesus, not the first one, the second one. I haven't had a chance to listen to myself yet. Because, um, you know, the, the bullshit continues with the Trojan horse trying to come through, um, Windows 10 trying to upload other foolishness that keeps trying to deter me, you know, but it's, 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 it's a mild day. And, you know, as I went over in that song yesterday, uh, monster, it, no biggie. Don't, don't, you know, I'm good. I got this. Um, but I felt like I, I had maybe done some of it like twice, exactly the same in the one video. 
and I don't know if I did or not, but I was like, should I, maybe I should change the name to Groundhog Day. Uh, so anyway, um, as usual, this stuff is all going on as I'm getting out of the bed, getting dressed, you know, taking my daughter to school. So we get to the elevator and I start thinking about Big Pun and who the fuck stole my CDs and replaced them with strange music. Now, this conversation came up yesterday. My daughter wanted to use the auxiliary, um, you know, in the car and play her iPod, her iPhone, you know, music from her. I was going to say iPod, but it's her iPhone. She wanted to play music from her phone. So she's like, can you press CD? And we're supposed to press tape. And I didn't even, because I have like, you know, the the system that still has a tape deck, cassette deck, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's a press tape for the auxiliary. And I heard her say CD, and I know CD's not right, but I did press CD. And the strangest music started playing. And it's not the first time. It just was a reminder that one day I had went to play Big Pun. I had a Big Pun CD. G bought it for me. He bought me like four CDs once. Um, he and uh, the the Barrington that I've mentioned before, um, and a Mike, um, to whom I used to be very close, called him like my brother. We had some back and forth, some falling out, but now I understand. He was, he was being Archangel Michael, like he had to stand in the way of certain things. So anyway, but they used to have this barbecue that was practically like, you know, it was a lot of people from their project that they would invite, men only for the most part. And, you know, most of whom I knew growing up, you know, we, I used to go over there to that project and you know, hang out with them until, you know, G came around or, you know, if he, maybe he wasn't home, maybe he was at school or something, whatever. And I would just chill with other people because I knew them. One time we went to the movies together for Easter. I don't know how we arranged this, like 40, 50 black folks getting together on time to go to an event together at the spur of the moment. Don't ask me how we achieved that. But we went to the movies to see this movie called Shocker about this guy that had been electrocuted and came back like as a ghost or something, um, like 50 deep, which means, you know, like the whole squad. <laughs> uh, and I think only a couple of girls, most of the, most of the people were these guys that go, they were going to this barbecue and they did it every year. But this one year I had gone and some, somebody came around the area selling CDs and G bought me these like four CDs. There was like old school hip hop. And then it was Fat Joe and Big Pun and whatever. So I had those. And I had four dance hall CDs from Jamaica, from a DJ in Jamaica. And I'm a DJ slash artist in Jamaica that he made for me himself. And my Maxwell CD. I don't remember what else was in there. But one day I had gone to play them or play something and this weird music came on. So I'm like, I'm pressing, okay, number two, number three. And I don't remember how many discs my CD changer holds, but it's a lot. And I'm like, okay, this next one, next one, next one, next one. And I'm like, where the fuck are my CDs? It was the strangest music that was playing. Like somebody took mine and replaced it with something odd. And I thought maybe it was D... I'm like, maybe he knows where I from, you know, like another man gave me these and he took them for that reason. I'm like, but that doesn't make sense. I mean, we were, we were already separated. I mean, that not that that, you know, stops people, um, you know, men or women from doing stuff, uh, like vengeful stuff, you know, out of jealousy or whatever. But it just didn't make sense that he did it, although he may have. I don't know. Um, so then I started feeling like maybe it was somebody in the 
garage, you know, where I park my car and one of the valets or, you know, one of the other customers or something. I don't know. Anyway, this happened. So it came up yesterday when my daughter told me to press CD. She was like, what is that? And I'm like, oh, that's that fucked up music. And then I realized that I had pressed CD instead of tape and I pressed tape. So this morning again, <laughs> um, walking to the elevator, I think about Big Pun. And, and again, I asked myself, who the fuck stole my CDs and replaced them with strange music? So I let go of that because I don't have an answer anyway. We get almost to the school and they start playing Pun on the radio. And I'm like, oh, okay, I must have to do you know, another one of his songs. Because before I did the one with him and Joe, I don't want to be a player no more. And that was about, you know, the beginning of the masculine return. I'm like, I must have to do another one of his songs. And then I was reminded by the radio when other things came on that this weekend is the Puerto Rican Day Parade in Spanish Harlem. So I'm like, oh, that's it. And... That's probably another reason why I've been feeling like the dailies were going to be so involved and take me so much time. And that's why I was like, oh, you know, I want to do a reading now, but I got to do these dailies. I'm like, maybe I need to do Jesus walks and I'll spell it like Dr. Seuss. I don't know why I thought that. So that may mean something. Um, so anyway, my daughter goes straight to school because of the time now. Now it's like almost time for her to be in there, you know, for the bell to ring and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I went to Duncan and spirit starts telling me, starts saying dementia, dementia. And I'm like, dementia. And then I'm like, Oh, okay. That must be another way. The dark gets angels of the light to the same way. Like they put the blocks on my memory the elders, they've blocked them, but they've blocked them so severely so they couldn't, you know, to disable them from explaining to us and sharing their stories and explaining certain things to us that would have helped us to awaken and come to, you know, a lot of realizations and aha moments, you know, a, a long time ago, rather than having to go through this, you know, the struggle to, to reach certain understandings. I'm like, oh, okay. And I thought about my friend's father and I've mentioned her father before and her, I think without her name, because her father was an alleged mobster. Okay. So member of the mafia of the alleged mafia. <laughs> and he allegedly uh, had to go on the lamb into the Everglades in Florida. And was staying at some kind of place. Again, this is all alleged. <laughs> staying at some kind of place like that movie. Um, oh, crap. What's that movie with those four or five guys in that house? It begins with a D. See, they're doing it to me right now. The blocks in the memory. I can like see the movie. I can like see the name, but it's not like coming to me. Anyway, I'll think of it. I, I'm, I'm, I, feel, I feel pretty confident that I'll come up with it. So anyway, um, but he got cancer. So at one point she had moved him to that cancer treatment centers of America and he got well, the cancer went away. And I think he had like a pretty bad one, like maybe even like pancreatic cancer or something that people often can't get rid of. Pancreatic cancer can come through like boom and you're dead. Like as soon as you find out you have it, that's it, it's too late. It's not like the other cancers. And diabetes, the pancreas controls that too because the pancreas controls our you know, insulin and sugar levels. I've mentioned this before about hyper, hyper and hypoactivity of insulin and or sugar is what diabetes really is um, or, or, or from where it comes. So anyway, I'm like, oh, okay, this is, Spirit is telling me that this is where, oh, from where the um, 
or why, you know, the elders get dementia. So then it's like, it's like spirits saying like, like they don't have dementia. They don't have dementia. They don't have Alzheimer's. They just have these severe blocks on them. And we're supposed to get them crystals. So then I thought about my own mother who has had problems with her memory, although thankfully, you know, is not diagnosed with Alzheimer's or dementia. Hers is from some medicine that she takes. Either It's either a di diabetes prevention medicine and or her pressure medicine, um, which is another way they get to people of color is hypertension. And hypertension and diabetes can often come hand in hand. So with that, I start thinking about my big mama, my grandmother. When she was in a rehabilitation center and then later hospice, first of all, she had diabetes. And she cooked. I told her she was a baker. She could make anything in the world from scratch. And she did. All kinds of cakes and stuff pies but she didn't eat them they'd be in these pretty glass cake holders like on her shelves and on top of her refrigerator and stuff like that um but when she got really sick from that and she had to like stay at a rehab so she wasn't at her house anymore for one thing when she was home my great-grandmother her mother the one the blue-eyed, dark-skinned woman with the long black hair, uh, you know, well into her 90s that did the calisthenics every morning at 5 a.m. Um, she took care of her. And it's like she waited to die until after she, her daughter was gone. But anyway, when my, do when my grandmother was just in the rehab and or later hospice, Dee and I used to drive to South Carolina from New York like every weekend for me to see her and it got to the point where she didn't know who I was but I would go there and comb her hair and brush her hair and braid her hair as in cornrow not plait and I was thinking oh she did not have dementia that was the dark I mean I mean I guess she did have dementia or whatever but it was the dark like she didn't have to have that or the diabetes, or anything. The Spirit's saying they need crystals. So, I wanted to tell you guys about the one that I had bought for my mother, um, which was supposed to help with this. And that was, at the time, that wasn't why I was buying it. But I told you that when I turn to a page in that crystal book, it's usually exactly what the person needs. So I bought her an elephant because she, that's like her spirit animal. Um, it's a pretty big elephant. It's entirely made of serpentine. So let me tell you about serpentine. Hang on. Okay, sorry. I had to turn the camera off for a minute because I hadn't realized I was going to go into that. I had to go grab my book. But while, while I'm stopped, let me jump back for a second. Um, what was I jumping back to? Oh, boy. Oh, um, well, for one thing, uh, Louisiana Lou again. I, I got your messages. So... I'm a, I'm a holler back, but as I said in the beginning, they had me kind of twisted, so I'm a little behind, but I am going to holler back. That wasn't all, though. Something else I wanted to, I was going to jump back to. I don't remember. All right, so I just grabbed the book, and I turned right to, not the serpentine, but seraphinite. So I recall this is something that I was going to purchase for someone else. And this is probably also helpful to you. So let me do this one first. Seraphinite, also known as Seraphina, like the play with the, of the African girl. Um, and of course, like Seraph, as in fire serpent angel as in what isis is a six winged angel 
Um, it's green. Like Isis is Ray. It's not emerald, but it's green. The appearance is of silvery feathers within the darker stone, often small and polished. Rarity, it's available in specialist stores, so it's likely available in the store from which I purchased mine, and hopefully you can find it somewhere near you. Attributes, placed on the third eye or meditated with, seraphinite is a stone of spiritual enlightenment and it is excellent for accessing self-healing. It is one of the crystals for making angelic connections and for opening the crown and higher crown chakras. This stone promotes living from the heart and has a gently cleansing effect on the heart chakra, opening to love. Its feathery wings whisk you up to a high spiritual vibration, and it is excellent for making journeys out of the body protecting the physical body while you are gone. Ah, maybe we should all get this. Maybe this is for when we're back and forth between dimensions, like I think I may have been while on tape yesterday. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, boy. Anyway, um, it can assist with reviewing the progress of life and with identifying the changes needed to put you on the path to peace and fulfillment. So it so sounds a lot, a lot like Archangel Jeremiah too, who I'm sure is um, at his higher levels, a seraph as well. Because I, I've you know gone over before, I think a lot of them repeat. So I think the four creatures, for example, are another version of Isis, Osiris, Horus, and Archangel Michael, or Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, um, as are the four horsemen. Anyway, for healing, seraphonite works best at a subtle level. It activates the spinal cord and it links to the etheric body, especially behind the heart, and can release muscle tension up into the neck. It is useful for overcoming chills and for promoting weight loss. Oh, I definitely need this to, you know, counteract um, the dark's energy to have me not being like I'm supposed to. Because I went to put on a pair of shorts yesterday. They were size 12? No. I think they were might have been a size 14 which is even more scary for me and it, it, it wasn't a good look I'll just I'll just put it that way um okay so this is the one I had meant to do serpentine serpentine color red green brown red brown yellow black green white appearance Modeled, M-O-T-T-L-E-D. Dual appearance can be water-worn and often polished. Comes in all sizes. Rarity, easily obtained from specialist stores. Source, Britain, specifically Cornwall. Oh, like in Bugs Bunny. Shut my mouth and call me Cornwall. And it, I think there's a general... Cornwall, too, in history. There's definitely a general, general Stonewall, right? Stonewall Jackson. Jackson, that name that keeps repeating. Jack Jackson, like Jack Kennedy, one of the first angels I was told of or, you know, how it was explained to me. Um, I don't know. I think that that may be a clue to something, <laughs> you know, to something we're supposed to look into. Anyway. Uh, so specifically Cornwall, and it's also found in Norway, Russia, Zimbabwe, Italy, and the United States. Attributes. Serpentine is an earthing stone that aids meditation and spiritual exploration, clearing the chakras and stimulating the crown chakra. It opens psychic abilities and helps you to understand the spiritual basis of life. This stone opens new pathways for the kundalini energy to, to rise. 
It assists the retrieval of wisdom and regains memory of past lives. Psychologically, serpentine helps you to feel more in control of your life. It corrects mental and emotional imbalances and assists the conscious direction of healing, uh, healing energy toward problem areas. Physically, serpentine is extremely cleansing and detoxifying for the body and blood. It is said to ensure longevity. Healing. Serpentine eliminates parasites, aids calcium and magnesium absorption. So I've gone over how we need, um, well, all of our vitamins, but magnesium is a very important one for angelics. Um, and treats hypoglycemia and diabetes. So those are two, that's the hyper and hyper, hyper and hypo, uh, you know, blood disorders basically that I mentioned before. You can have too much insulin, you can have too little insulin, you can have too much sugar, you can have too little sugar. In either case, it would be the fact that your pancreas and thereby the associated glands, you know, are not working enough or working too hard. Position, hold or place on appropriate spot. It's an infinite stone. And then they have in parentheses, light green serpentine um, is a gentle, tender natured stone that brings you into contact with angelic guidance. It accesses and integrates the past, present and future and is excellent for past life exploration as it promotes compassion and forgiveness for yourself and what you went through holding this. So this again, sounds like a lot like um, what we would seek out Archangel Jeremiah for us. So if you don't have the stone and can't find it, you can certainly always do that or whether you, you know, whether you have it, the stone or not. Um, holding this stone takes you into the healing realms that exists in between lives state so that healing that was not undertaken after a former life ended can be completed. This stone heals imbalances from past lives and clears emotional baggage from previous relationships placed on the throat. It aids speaking of the past and resolves issues that have been carried over into the present. Use infinite stone if you want to. Okay, so now I get it. Infinite stone is serpentine that is this of this light green color. Uh, use infinite stone if you want to confront anyone from your past as it brings a gentle touch to the meeting. Light green serpentine is excellent for pain relief, especially menstrual and muscular aches and pains. Okay, that's it with that. Remember the movie Reservoir Dogs? <laughs> that's what um my friend's stories of her father's uh alleged activities in life reminded me of reservoir dogs okay um so where was i <laughs> oh goodness i'm sorry All right, I think I can go to like yesterday and the day before that now, I believe so. All right, so some updates. Simone texted me last night and says she is no longer going to the party. So my birthday is a bust so far, a complete bust. Although I am going and I'm not manifesting a permanent bust. Don't get me wrong. It, it, it will pop off somehow, some way. But tonight I'm going to the movies with my girls to see uh, Now You See Me, part two, the movie about the four horsemen that are magicians like us um, in both cases. Um, so there's that. Yeah, someone or something is trying to make, you know, my birthday lame. Uh, I have to figure out what that is. But, you know, then again, Simone and her boyfriend 
are a twin flame couple. So by Saturday, this could all be a distant memory and the same party that I had intended to go to for the past several months, you know, could still be what pops off. But something will, I promise you. I will not be lame. I can't. This is nine. This is year nine. I have to end it with a bang. Anyway, maybe I'll end it with a bang. That could happen. I could be going half on a baby. If the cards... <laughs> I mean, the cards are always right, but, you know, if they're for now, if they're for this weekend, that could be how I spend my birthday. Anyway, I forgot to mention when I went over basketball, the basketball references uh, with regard to the victory that it came to me that keep an eye on Barnes, Harrison Barnes, uh, he spells his name is his last name is spelled B A R N E S. Was instruction not to forget about South Carolina, North Carolina, Queen Charlotte, all those niggas in Paris, etc. Because Barnes Street is the street my grandmother's house was on. My big mama, her house was on Barnes Street. Well, it still is. She's she's not there anymore, but um. And then I kept thinking about, remember the Titans? I don't know what that means either. I mean, I know the movie, Remember the Titans, and I think I mentioned before that we should probably see it. Denzel's in it. I know Denzel is something in this because I've been made to mention him a few times and he's in quite a few of these movies. And I went to see Denzel. I don't know how old I must have been because I think he was 19. So I was little, but I saw him at Henry Street Settlement in a one-man show doing Malcolm X. Of You know, it was a one-man show of the autobiography of Malcolm X long before he starred as Malcolm X on screen. I don't know. Um, I also started thinking about my quote unquote first, he's another Patrick and was a football player. So maybe that's the thing with, remember the Titans? I don't know. I mean, maybe that's why that remember the Titans came up like sort of in the same frame of thought as. Oh, my grandmother lives on Barnes Street. That's what keep an eye on Barnes means. Not necessarily the player, although it may mean that too. You know, like maybe he's going to be a breakout star or is already considered a breakout star. I don't know. I haven't been able to watch any of the damn games. <laughs> That's all I see are numbers. <laughs> oh, boy. Um... Yeah, but my, my first, he was a football player. Of course, a star athlete, quarterback, all that. Uh, he was Patrick, like St. Patrick's old cathedral school that I went to in the St. Patrick's Day Parade in which I was a cheerleader, the head cheerleader, because I started the team. I asked Sister Patrick if we could have one to go with the boys team and I remember what our boys played I don't remember what sport they played but I asked if we could have a cheerleading squad she said yes I was the head cheerleader I had written this cheer called victory like the victory we just had oh Wow, I don't, I don't remember the cheer, though. I remember it was called Victory. Anyway, that, I guess, is a segue because I was made to drive past St. Patrick's, I guess, the quote-unquote new cathedral. It's the one that I went to in the old cathedrals in um, an area of New York called Little Italy. And it might not even be there anymore. They may have taken it down. I don't know. But I know it closed long ago. Closed while I was 
well, the new one was made, the new St. Patrick's was made, and Cardinal O'Connor was installed there back when I was little, when I was still in St. Patrick's, I think. And I remember when my son was little, I was going to put him in St. Patrick's and we went down there and it was completely disruptive. It was bizarre. It just seemed like there was no order there. Sister Patrick wasn't there. Perhaps she had passed away. I don't know. Um, I don't think the prince, the new principal was a nun at all. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing, but I don't think she was. I don't think the teachers were nuns either. And my son said, I mean, I don't like it here. And he was only like three. And I'm like, I don't either. Let's get out of here. And we left. Uh, I don't know. But anyway, I was made to pass by um, St. Patrick's yesterday, as well as St. John's, which was under construction or something. I could see like something was on the building. Um, I'd gotten mixed up in that damn traffic and decided like, you know, screw where I was going. I was headed to Costco and was prevented from going there and stuck in a lot of traffic that seemed to really come out of nowhere. In fact, I was on the FDR drive first and it said that there was heavy traffic to 90, 90th street or 91st street. And I'm going like, neither one of those is even an exit. The only exit in the nineties is at 96th street. So what happens to the traffic at 90th? But of course that's nine. So maybe that meant something or 91 is, you know, one of our numbers, 19, 91, which is 10, which is one. But that was bizarre to me. So anyway, I got off the FDR drive at Houston street because my daughters really wanted to go. And they're like, um, the older one was like, let's take the local street. So I'm like, okay. So I did that and I had gone over a couple of avenues. I didn't want to go too far away, but I gone over a couple of avenues. I figured everybody would be taking the next avenue up. Everybody that got off the highway and got to like Midtown and it got really extra bad there. And I turned off a couple another, you know, a couple more streets. And finally I was just like, screw this. Cause my, the older one, she had to go to school. It was her last day of this semester of the, you know, the, second school she had been going to because she graduated from college in December um, at the young age of 20. So um, anyway, I had got into all that and then I looked up and realized that I was passing Polo, you know, Ralph Lauren on my right. And I've been thinking about Polo a lot. Ralph Lauren a lot and then thoughts with that were coming into my mind about how my father always said my mother looked like Sophia Loren I wasn't sure what had to do with what um but that was in the in the past days so when I saw that I was passing Ralph Lauren I said uh spirit did this and as I made a left turn um you know to go back downtown south I realized I'd made my turn from 55th Street, so 55 on to Fifth Avenue, so 555. And I'm driving down Fifth southbound. I was made to notice Cartier and Harry Winston, etc. And I thought about the Blood Diamonds. Um, but I'm still not really sure what I'm, where to do about them, and if anything. But then I started thinking about like maybe they keep showing them because we're not supposed to wear them anymore. Because I have, I've lost some diamond earrings. And like I said, Archangel Chamuel usually returns my stuff to me, including the diamond earrings the first several times. But eventually, like one, you know, of each pair was lost and I never found it. And even Archangel Chamuel didn't return it to me. And I wonder if he was saying like, God damn it, I said stop wearing these <laughs> Because Archangel Chamuel, Chamuel, Metatron, and Raphael were the first presences, and maybe they were, maybe they're the other three horsemen, 
you know, maybe again, they're variations of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four creatures, all that. Um, the four, all that stuff. Um, but anyway, those three were who I first felt living in my house with me. And I talk to them like they're my brothers. Like, I don't always even remember to say Archangel. I'll say like, you know, I'll, I'll be, I'll be missing something. I'll say, Tammy, well, where's my, you know, like, can you help me find my, you know, whatever, please. And then it turns up. Or when they were doing stuff, I'd be like, you know, Raphael is, if that's you, like, not now, like, this is, I, I'm trying to record this thing, you know. That no, really wasn't Raphael that would act. That was, that was Chamuel too. And I say, I know, we were definitely friends or something, you know, in the angelic realms because you play too much, you know. Um, so anyway, I started thinking maybe that's why I was meant to show you guys my ring that time. And I'll show it again for those that didn't see it. I bought this for myself. And I buy so much stuff there. She gave me a discount. I don't remember how much it was, but I, did, I didn't pay much for it at all. And it is uh, sterling silver and so, some sort of, is it aquamarine? It's some sort of aqua stone, but I don't think it's aquamarine. Maybe I'll flip through the pages of the book again and see if I see the name a name that looks familiar um, as to what this is. But anyway, I had joked that I was engaged and I put it on my left ring finger. So then I started thinking like maybe with these commitments that I see developing um, and being completely forged for many of us by like August, September, I'm like maybe we're supposed to use some other kind of stone like maybe spirit doesn't want us wearing blood diamonds anymore i don't know though so i don't want to make anybody that has diamonds feel guilty that loves diamonds that wants a you know a big diamond engagement ring i don't want to make you feel guilty or anything like that but that was the thought that i had maybe it is aquamarine because now i'm flipping through this book and i don't see any other stones named aqua anything and i think it was aqua something um i also remember the other thing i wanted to tell you and i realize now why i had been prevented in that moment when i couldn't remember it a few minutes ago also i don't know if you noticed but one of my candles is burning empty again the wick is still there at least in this time <laughs> this time but there's no wax or anything in that candle. I don't know if you can see that. Um, so anyway, yesterday when I was saying I wasn't sure if my feelings about contact with my twin were appropriate or not, they are. Okay, this is the way it was explained to me. And it's kind of like what I said already. When we don't have the ego attached, when it is genuine, we are, and we, you know, that genuine feeling to seek out our twin out of love, only love, pure, unconditional, divine love, we are supposed to. Otherwise, they seek us like God, like the king in heaven, the king of the universe seeks us and we're supposed to be open to him finding us and us receiving his love or him because he is love the universe is love 
similarly, as I've said before, our twins are, you know, these divine partners that are chosen for us by the, you know, angelic realms as they were in some way, whether it's a soulmate, a twin soul, a twin flame, these are either souls with whom we agree to reunite or part of our soul. Again, again, depending upon which type of divine union it is. So they are always with us. They are always seeking us like God, the other king, as above, so below. So the heavenly king is always seeking us. The earthbound kings are always seeking us. Always lurking somewhere. And it is only when our hearts are open, our energy is balanced and in a position to receive. I always say, especially when certain cards turn up, we have to be in a position to not just give, but receive. And some people have trouble receiving, you know, myself included. I've been there receiving, you know, whatever gifts, but love is a gift, you know, so that would fit there too. Um, but it is when we are open to receiving and our energy is positive and welcoming that they come forward. And this is why, you know, they return so often and then disappear again. Because when we get back into fear, like, is he going to leave? Is he going to leave? Is he going to leave? He's here now. This feels so nice. I hope he doesn't leave. But that's when we're scared. That's when we're forgetting that they're always with us. Like God is always with us. That's why they go. It always comes back to as above, so below. Okay. Um, so let me tell you about this aquamarine while I have this page here. It comes in green. So I guess that's why mine is green. Or it says green, um, green, blue. Now I guess this is green, blue depending upon the angle. Um, appearance, clear to opaque crystal, often small and tumbled or faceted. So this is kind of faceted. Um, rarity, readily available, source, United States, Mexico, Russia, Brazil, India, Ireland, Zimbabwe, Afghanistan, Pakistan. Aquamarine is a stone of courage. Its calming energies reduce stress and quiet the mind. It harmonizes its surroundings and protects against pollutants. In ancient times, it was believed to counteract the forces of darkness and procure favor from the spirits of light. It was carried by sailors as a talisman against drowning. Psychologically, aquamarine has an affinity with sensitive people. So I'm a sensitive, I'm an empath. I'm the mother of all empaths, like literally and metaphorically. It has the power to invoke tolerance of others. It overcomes judge judgmentalism, gives support to anyone who is overwhelmed by responsibility. So I need this <laughs> in my life. Um, and encourages taking responsibility for oneself. It creates a personality that is upright, persistence, persistent, like that card from, again, from Lou, our Ascended Master Lou, L-U-G-H. He always says persistence, 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 and we see that like every week. Um, so it, encourage, it creates a personality that is upright, persistent, and dynamic. It can break old self-defeating programs. Aquamarine calms the mind, removing extraneous thought. It filters information, reaching the brain, and clarifies perception, sharpens the intellect, and clears up confusion. With its ability to bring unfinished business to conclusion, aquamarine is useful for closure on all levels. It clears blocked communication and promotes self-expression. 
This stone is helpful in understanding underlying emotional states and interpreting how you feel. It soothes fears and increases sensitivity. Spiritually, aquamarine sharpens intuition and opens clairvoyance. A wonderful stone for meditation, it invokes high states of consciousness and spiritual awareness and encourages service to humanity. Aquamarine shields the aura and aligns the chakras, clearing the throat chakra and bringing communication from a higher plane. It also aligns the physical and spiritual bodies. For healing, aquamarine is useful for sore throats, swollen glands, and thyroid problems. So I mentioned um, earthbound, jo um, yeah, earthbound Lilith, George. Her sister has consistent thyroid problems. It harmonizes the pituitary gland and the thyroid, regulating hormones and growth. This other uh, pituitary gland, this is why um, a lot of masculines have that man boob. That's another distortion created by the dark, which I think is, in some respects, okay, because this is what we are. We are... Ah, uh, they don't like what I'm saying. The dark, they, <laughs> they just took, they just blew out my candle that was continuing to burn. Although there was no wax or anything left in it. It just went out. Um, they don't want me to tell you this too bad. We are androgynous at the soul level. So man boob is really just, um, part of us. You know, it's used again as a distortion to create a, you know, some sort of a dysmorphia with regard to our bodies, you know, in the, in the case of men who don't want to have breasts, which is understandable. Um, but at the same time, so what? We're angels. And it'll go away anyway. If that's not how they were meant to be, that's not how they will be. They will be, or they are, we just haven't manifested it physically because our vibration isn't high enough. But when our vibration is high enough, we can make ourselves, you know, look exactly how we want. Whenever we want, however we want, you know, how just how, just as Jesus appeared as a burning bush, you know, or whatever the case may be. If your hair hasn't grown back, if my hair hasn't grown back, I'll make myself some. You can make yourself some. If, um, you know, I don't know, your skin has gotten bad and it used to be so, you know, clear and pretty, you want it clear, and, you know, or, or quote unquote pretty, you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. So, um... You know, you want it that way again, make it that way. But in the meantime, there are things that we can do to that end as well. Again, using these organic products, put some olive oil on your face, put some coconut oil on your face, raw coconut oil, extra virgin olive oil. You know, certain things we can't go cheap with, but again, you can get them from places like Costco, um, which is sort of a corporation of the light at a more affordable price. And they accept EBT if that's, you know, appropriate for you, a necessity for you. Okay, I went, I went, <laughs> I went off again. Um, I guess there was a reason for that too. Um, what was I saying? This stone has a general tonic effect. It strengthens the body, cleansing organs, and aids the eyes, jaw, and teeth, and stomach. It is useful for counteracting short or long sightedness and calms overreactions of the immune system and autoimmune diseases such as hay fever. Position, hold, or place as appropriate can be placed on the eyes or used as an elixir. I also 
stopped on another page prior to this and I said, oh, this is some, this must be something too. Not that every stone in here isn't something, but something that I'm supposed to mention now. And this one's called Angelite. A-N-G-E-L-I-T-E. -E. Color, blue and white, sometimes flecked with red. Appearance, opaque and often veined like wings. Largest stone. Rarity, easily obtained. Source, Britain, Egypt, Germany, Mexico, Peru, Poland, Libya. Attributes, angelite is one of the stones of awareness for the, for the new age. Okay, well, maybe we all need this because that's where we're going into the new age. Like that song, welcome to the new age. It represents peace and brotherhood. Ooh, yeah, but we, we need this. As its name suggests, angelite facilitates conscious contact with the angelic realm. It enhances telepathic communication and enables out-of-body journeys to take place while still maintaining contact with everyday reality. So this is how the new age, the new world, the new earth, was explained to me and I was trying to relay that I believe it was yesterday I was saying we're going to still be here we'll still be alive we'll still be here but at the same time we'll be you know enjoying this other dimension um and we'll be here for as long as here is here because again as I understand it um and yesterday I had even come across something where I think I found the date. The date. Something I was reading said the seventh month, something biblical. Oh, okay. It may be what I actually sat down here to talk to you about, which I'm probably going to have to do in a separate video because um, <laughs> this is probably going to go long, but I'll try to get to it, at least some of it. Yesterday I had this thought that the time looked like Bible verses. And so I said, let me see what the 11th book of the Bible is. And I Google book to the Bible and counted them. One, two, three, four, until I got to 11 in the Old Testament. And then read that. And I'm like, okay. And I started to just do 11, nine, but then I realized no, one, one, one. So I think it went up to 1128. And I realized that was one, one, one. And so I stopped there. I said, I'm, I was meant to read all of this. And then I did the same thing with nine eleven, and again, in the old Testament. And I went to do it with the new Testament. And as I was scrolling and counting the books, I saw this thing about the letter to Baruch or from Baruch. And I said, ah, Baruch, they keep telling me about Baruch and Baruch. 23rd Street, maybe this is part of that. Something came up with that also. Other than that, when I was driving to that area uh, where Brook is located a couple of days ago, the 18th Street, East 18th Street and Avenue C that I said, you know, like haunts me, taunts me all the time. I'm like, what are they trying to tell me about this street sign? It's the bus, the M9, 18 is 9 the M9, and it travels along Avenue C. Why do they want me to see this bus? Because he's upset about the busing and Rosa Parks, back of the bus, and Thurgood Marshall, you know, not getting enough of his due, although he was, you know, the first black Supreme Court justice. But, like, we take him too lightly, and our children don't know about him as they should. Brown versus the Board of Education. And then he went to Calvin Butts. And I think he's not happy with Calvin Butts, although I'm not sure. Calvin Butts here um, is the head of the of Abyssinian Baptist Church, which owns a lot of Harlem. And I was getting the sense that I was being told that that's what he's not happy about. Like Calvin Butts was instrumental in people who shouldn't own Harlem, you know, obtaining a lot of it. And how did that come about? Well, because Thurgood Marshall School is in Harlem, atop a, an IHOP, 
on 135th Street and Adam Clayton Powell Boulevard. And that property is owned by Abyssinian Baptist Church, as is, again, a lot of the property in Harlem. And I felt like I was being told what's not owned by them um, in large part is owned by these people that shouldn't have any of it. So all that rushed through my head yesterday. And that's not even what I was going to tell you. I was going to tell you something about Baruch too. So again, I'll probably have to do this in a different video because I'm still talking about other stuff. But I guess what I had perceived as the back of the building of Baruch University. So I mentioned, you know, the lower school, the high school, the, the college, they're all on 23rd Street. But the university on the back of the building, or again, what I perceive to be the back because I typically drive along 23rd Street. So another time I was on, I guess, 22nd Street and I saw the building from that side. And there's statues all along that building of like a divine family, like Mary and Joseph and Jesus or Isis and Osiris and Horus. And the word Excelsior. So I'm like, okay, I know Excelsior means superiority. Are they telling me about Cavaliers again? So something said, look up, look it up in the Urban Dictionary. Um, since you already know the Webster Dictionary meaning, look it up in the Urban Dictionary. And I did. And the Excelsior turned out to be some starship from the movie and show, TV show, I guess, Star Trek. But it was like their longest used starship or something or major part of a star fleet so I, I i meant to go over that with you guys too or i i will and i'm sure that means something because again all these shows like i went over chucky the movie child's play to explain to you how isis got inside me <laughs> <laughs> you know so it seems crazy and, I, and i'm going to see now you see me too tonight because i was told to and i'm told to tell you guys to go see it this is just another way that spirit has you know planned to give us our messages because these people you know who create this artwork um of different forms different medias are angelics and i went off on a tangent again okay so where was i <laughs> Oh boy, Mariama. Um, I was reading something about this angel light, but I don't remember which part. So I'm going to go to this. Angel light is a powerful stone for healers because it deepens attunement and heightens perception. It also provides protection for the environment or body, especially when taken as an elixir. So I'm not sure what they mean by taken as an elixir. Like, are we supposed to grind it into powder and eat it? I don't know. Angelite is formed of celestite. Oh, so I have this already. <laughs> Essentially, that has been compressed over millions of years. And it shares many properties with that stone. Psychologically, angelite helps you to speak your truth, whatever it may be. It also helps you to be more compassionate and accepting especially of that which cannot be changed. It alleviates psychological pain and counteracts cruelty. Mentally, angelite has been used to enhance astrological understanding and to bring deeper understanding of mathematics. Oh, so I might, I'm, maybe I'm getting ready to turn into a, a total geek because I already had an understanding of mathematics and I had already begun, be, begun to get an astrological understanding, I think, when I started to take on my twins gifts um it also facilitates telepathic contact between minds and i had that already so if that gets more continues to grow yeah i'm about to turn into superwoman or wonder woman who was an amazon like me 
she was from the Amazon and she called herself an Amazon. She was a thick woman like me <laughs> and tall like me. Uh, Linda Carter play, played Wonder Woman. Anyway, or maybe Xena, the warrior princess. She's tall and thick too. See, I'm doing it again. Um... Spiritually, angelite is filled with compassion. It transmutes pain and disorder into wholeness and healing, opening the way for spiritual inspiration. It creates a deep feeling of peace and tranquility. It helps connect to universal knowledge and raises awareness. Angelite facilitates in the rebirthing process, stimulates healing, and opens psychic channeling. In healing, applied to the feet, angelite unblocks meridians and energetic pathways. And I remember I always say we have to let, allow the violet flame to enter the chakra and to go, you know, to our feet and through our feet and back up and around. You know, we have to ha we have to be open to a flow. It resonates with the throat, alleviating inflammation and balancing the thyroid and parathyroids. This soothing stone repairs tissue and blood vessels, balancing the fluids within the body and can act as a diuretic. It is useful in weight control and relates particularly to the lungs and arms. Angelite can cool the pain of sunburn. At a subtle level, angelite balances the physical body with the etheric realms. Position, hold, or place on the body as appropriate. So I don't do that with my celestite. It's huge. I haven't put it on myself. But I think it's okay It's that it's just in my bedroom on top of my TV. All right. Where was I? Um, cryptic notes. Okay. Oh, I also passed some seemingly strategically placed letter T's. And I have been thinking about the letter T a lot. I know that that sounds strange to say. I've been thinking about the letter T, but I have been. And um, I had said that I would look into the potential meaning and I think I even said that on film, like during one of the videos, like I got to find out what T means, you know, just by itself, um, but hadn't. And then the other morning, um, after the night I spoke of in the first Jesus Walks, I had seen a building that seemed to have a huge T on it as I was driving along South Street. So like the service road of the FDR drive, I wasn't actually on the highway. I was underneath it. And I couldn't tell if it really did have a letter T on it or if that was a reflection or of some sort or, or, or what was going on. If, you know, God was sending me a hologram, or I wasn't sure what was happening, but it began to look like a hammer. And then I remembered if I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning and it was a song I went over by Peter, Paul and Mary. Um, which, also, I'm sure isn't an accident that, you know, the members of that group were named Peter, Paul and Mary. Um, so anyway, then it started to look like a machete. And I thought briefly, very briefly about this one time when my godmother lived next door to us. There was a machete and her man wasn't there anymore. He used to hit her. He used to beat her. And my father had helped her to get him out of there. Um, so she was a, a female alone at this point. This, nobody lived in this part of New York. Um, yeah, New York City at the time. I told you a lot of surrounding us now is landfill. Um because it was not here before. It was put there by man so they could add some of these towers as part of the capitalism. But where I live was here, but wasn't much else here. Like the seaport wasn't built up. Um, if it rained too hard, the river would come up and fish would, you know, run up on South Street, be swept up on South Street. That's where the, South, the original fish market was before Giuliani moved it to the Bronx. There was like nothing down here. So we had bats is what I'm trying to get to. And this one day I was very little. This bat was, had its wings spread and was pressed up against my godmother's screen, you know, in her window. 
just open like Count Dracula. And my father went over there with his machete and stabbed it and killed it. So anyway, I got to that and I was like, no, not a machete. A machete is a knife. Tomahawk. Tommy Hawk. Tommy, like Thomas. Thomas means twin. Twin Hawks. Horace is the hawk. Were there twin hawks? Was, is Osiris a hawk too? Maybe. Are he and Set twin hawks? Like 66 or 69? And then I remembered, oh, this was another aside that I guess was helpful later when I was looking for the books to the Bible. I remembered there's 66 books in the Bible. So I said, maybe this is one of the things they've been trying to tell us. 66, 66, 66. He's probably like, open up the freaking Bible already. I keep giving you the verse numbers. I keep giving you the, you know, trying to tell you about the book. I told you about Baruch 10,000 times. You're not getting it. Maybe I'm getting it now because I bought the Celestite. I don't know. Um, anyway, so I start thinking maybe the hawk means twin. Because we know Jesus wasn't a twin. And although I did dream, envision, whatever it was of having twins myself, the baby that, that seemed to be particularly special um, that I was to have was a single, it wasn't a twin. So I'm like, okay, so the Christ child is still not a twin. I mean, they're all gonna be Christ children, Christ consciousness children. But I'm, I was thinking in terms of the Christ child wasn't a twin, and it's still not going to be a twin. So no, this must be about Osiris. He's the twin. He's the twin. He's Cain and Abel. He's the Wesley brothers. Because one brother did write and one didn't. And the one that didn't, like, I guess overpowered the other one. So neither one of them ended up doing right. Or one brother wanted to do right, I should say, from what I read. Or was that a father and son, like Mario and Van Peebles and his son, Marvin? Or Marvin is the father and Mario's the son. Yeah, that's how it is. So I don't know. I don't know what any of this means, but this is what started running through my head when I saw that hammer. But that led me to look up more words in the Freemason translator. Um, to which I've added a link to the cake, cake, cake video, by the way, because that's where I spoke first spoke of it. Oh, also, while I'm thinking about that, I also have been led a few times, beginning with the day that I felt really overwhelmed. I told you spirit was telling me to talk about so many things, like talk about the Titanic, talk about the Titanic and talk about the Gowanus, the water and talk about this. And I just got like, I got to take a nap. Like, I don't even know what to do right now. That day, before allowing me to take that nap, I was made to watch this short video and it turned out to be about the Titanic. And I'm like, okay, he's serious about this. Like I really wasn't allowed to lay down until I watched this video first. Um, and a video that sort of came out of nowhere onto my YouTube. So anyway, now I went ahead and subscribed to the people that made that. And now I get all kinds of videos Typically after I get a message from spirit, I get a video um, about the same thing. So I began to add those to my playlists so that you guys can watch them. And you'll find that a lot of the stuff that we've talked about and learned, you know, I guess in many cases the hard way is sort of in like 7 to 15 minutes reviewed in these videos. Um, so yeah, I added that to where I was talking about the cake, 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 and maybe I should go over 
if I should go over the new words that I looked up. Because I looked up T. And T equals two, according to the Freemason language, which means to be awake, enlightened, illuminated, knowing. And in those hyperlinks on the side that I told you about, it says Jesus, gold. Then I looked up hammer. Um, H means eight again. Balance, God, good, Christian, which I'm, I, I know is not right. Because um, again, God doesn't want any more religion. And he probably never wanted religion. It also means, according to them, a non-secret society, entity, or person. God, creator, are the hyperlinks there. Then A, number one, the top, the best, the key, IRS, Microsoft, which I told you disturbed me, especially IRS. Four, an M4 is something. Something in the military, right? Now, I want you to know I've never been in the military. <laughs> I'm only, I've only been this kind of soldier, like a street soldier. I've never been in the military. But again, my D, my children's father, um, was in the military a long time. My father was in the military a long time. Like all the men in my family, with the exception of my son, like we stopped it there. Um because we actually wouldn't allow him to to join um, all the men in my family have been in the military um, but at M4 is feeling military to me right now but anyway according to the Freemasons or this, this Freemason translator um, so allegedly according to the Freemasons M4, M equals 4 which equals secret society related or member of secret society. Uh, and the hyperlinks are Bugs Bunny, VH1, and CNN. And then there's another M, of course, in Hammer. And then E equals five, unbalanced, bad, war, stress, work, confusion, deceit, chaos, or lies. Represents the Masonic compass and square. And then they have AT&T, Grinch, Oz. Oh, speaking of Oz, yesterday I wanted to be able to get back on and tell you guys, the Empire State Building, when I passed it, was illuminated in emerald green. And I thought about Oz. And I don't know if Oz is going to have anything to do with it. But I thought about those painted numbers and symbols that had been on the street that time. And several times thereafter um, that I didn't bother to mention because I'd already talked about it. Um, like number 29 with an arrow pointing that way. I, I took pictures of some of them before and put it, attached them to one of the videos. So I started thinking about that, like follow the yellow brick road and how Oz was a fraud. And it was really Dorothy who had the power and, and the other people. So that reminded me of us. You know, they all found out they had the power within themselves to achieve whatever it was they were trying to achieve. And we're supposed to be of the same mindset. And I remembered, as I mentioned on one of the videos, I was on the soundtrack of the movie The Wiz. Starring Michael Jackson and Diana Ross. The soundtrack was done by Quincy Jones. All of this <laughs> started going through my head and I don't know exactly... What, if anything, well, I shouldn't say if anything, because it definitely means something. I don't know what it means yet. Um, R for hammer, back to that, equals nine, the end or to end, apathetic, cruel, cold, evil, calculating, ruthless. And the hyperlinks for that are Jeep, VW, eHarmony, and hammer equals 31, you know, all the numbers that they attributed to these letters, they total 31, 31 equals four. So that takes you back, according to this numerical language again, to secret society related or a member of secret society, Bugs Bunny, VH1, CNN. So then I said, let me do Lilith. Let me see if she comes out as the devil. So L equals three, 
the bottom, low quality, Kia, Geico, I equals nine, the end or to end, apathetic, cruel, cold, evil, calculating, ruthless, Jeep, VW, eHarmony, L equals three, the bottom, low quality, Kia, Geico, I, we did already, T, I've done when I started, H, I did when I started, that's the one they attribute to God, creator, and Lilith totals 34, um, which is seven, so that's appropriate, all seven, we will watch them fall, but they have seven equals neutral, good or bad, indifferent, real meaning of Masonic, capital G, Google, Shrek, then I did devil, uh, D equals four, secret society related or a member of secret society, Bugs Bunny, VH1, CNN, E equals five, unbalanced, bad, war, stress, work, confusion, deceit, chaos, lies, represents the Masonic compass or square, AT&T, Grinch, Oz, V equals four, secret society related or a member of a secret society, Bugs Bunny, VH1, CNN. And the other day I saw a license plate that was just six V's. V, 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 V. And I'm like, hmm, are those Roman numerals or is that like the V from the Freemason language or something different or none of the above, just something this person made up? Although I doubt that since I was made to notice it. Like today there was a car parked in front of me in the garage where the valet had lined up my car. I was the second car in line. And the car in front of me was a Jaguar. So I got to see the cat in the back. And I'm thinking, okay, big cat. The license plate to me said Muhammad. It didn't really. It was like it was like M M M H M D M D. Something like that. And I'm like, oh Muhammad, the Jaguar. I, uh, don't pay me any mind <laughs> oh god um i nine the end or two in apathetic cruel cold evil calculating ruthless g v w e harmony l3 the bottom low quality kia geico and the devil totals 25 which is also seven um again meaning neutral good or bad indifferent Real me meaning of Masonic, capital G, Google Shrek. So I'm like, well, at least they're both seven. Um, and perhaps there's another five words I'm supposed to test that will also equal seven. Um, and these are the all, the, the all seven that are going to fall. I don't know. Again, don't pay me any mind. <laughs> but do pay close attention to me at the same time. Everything and nothing. Um, I'm wondering if I should finish or what I should do here. Um, da, 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 da. Let's see. Where was I? Oh, so this is a note about um, Excelsior meaning Cavalier and stuff. So I already mentioned that to you guys. And I already mentioned to you about the Star Trek thing. So let me actually read one of those Bible verses. And then maybe I'll wrap this one. Let's see. So Old Testament comes up first. I did one, two, three. Anyway, I en ended up on Kings 1 as the 11th book of the Bible. And then I went to book 11, book 11 or book nine. I think I went to book nine. Okay. Elisha. So the, again, the prophet Elijah, this is another way of spelling it. E L I S H A and Jehu. J-E-H-U of Israel or Jehu. 
Elisha the prophet called one of the guild prophets and said to him, get ready for a journey. Take this flask of oil with you. So this doesn't look like what I read, but I guess I'm supposed to be reading this. And go to Ramoth dash Gilead. So Ramoth, capital R A M O T H hyphen Gilead G I L like gill, like fish E A D. Maybe this is the lead fish, the head fish, like the head nigga in charge, the H N I C. Maybe this is the head fish. Anyway, uh, when you get there, look for Jehu, son of Jehoshaphat, son of Nimshi, N-I-M-S-H-I. Enter and take him away from his companions and bring him into the inner chamber. The goddess Queen Mother Isis often asked that we enter the chamber with her, the um, chamber of the Black Obsidian we've seen a few times and the chamber of Lapis Lazuli we've seen a few times too. And I'm sure she has other chambers she'd ask us to enter with her. Anyway, um, from the flask you have, pour oil on his head and say, Thus says the Lord, I anoint you king over Israel, then open the door and flee without delay. The aide, in parenthesis they have the prophet's aide, went to Ramoth, Gilead. When he arrived, the commander of the army were in session. He said, I have a message for you, commander. Jehu asked, for which one of us? For you, commander, he answered. Jehu got up and went into the house. Then the prophet's aide poured the oil on his head and said, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I anoint you king over the people of the, of the Lord, over Israel. You shall destroy the house of Ahab. So this is Ahab coming up again, the same way he did um, when I read Jeremiah 29, when that popped into my head, like from the Jeremiah song, birthday sex. <laughs> Some spirit said, go read Jeremiah 29. And I did that live with you guys. Um, and Ahab was somebody that was to be punished. And I couldn't remember at the time what I have been saying for the past couple of weeks. Um, call my, call me Ishmael is, I believe the first line of Moby Dick. Uh, it's the one I remember at least. Anyway, you, um, you shall destroy the house of Ahab, your master. Thus will I avenge the blood of my servants, the prophets, and the blood of all the other servants of the Lord, shed by Jezebel. So Jezebel is another Lilith, or I guess another variation of Lilith. The whole house of Ahab shall perish. I will cut off from Ahab's line every male, whether bond or free in Israel. So he's saying, if it's a good person, if it's a bad person, I'm still going to kill them. And this is what I've told you guys. This is why the past lives are so important, because even if you're a good person in present day, present life, perhaps you were not in the past or perhaps you were. But yet and still, perhaps your forefathers were not. And you will pay for that if you don't repent and cleanse yourself. Um, I will make the house of Ahab like the house of Jeroboam, J-E-R-O-B-O-A-M, son of Nebat, N-E-B-A-T, and like that of Basha, B-A-A-S-H-A, son of Ahijah, A-H-I-J-A-H. In the confines of Jezreel, J-E-Z-R-E-E-L, like real, like reeling in a fish. The dog shall devour Jezebel so that no one can bury her. Then he opened the door and fled. When Jehu rejoined his master's servants, they asked him, is all well? Why did that madman come to you? He replied, 
you know that kind of man and his talk. But they said, tell us another lie. So he told them, this is what the prophet's aide said to me. Thus says the Lord, I announce you king over Israel. At once, each took his garment, spread it under Jehu on the bare steps, blew the horn and cried out, Jehu is king. Now this reminds me of the way Muslims pray. Again, five times before sundown, you spread a garment, you know, on the floor under you. There's a prayer cloth, a prayer mat, and that's on what, on what you kneel. Um, the death of Joram of Israel. So now I'm up to verse 14. So that was book 11, Kings. Oh, wait, I clicked on Kings 2. I guess I was meant to read this. Kings 2, chapter 9. I thought I was clicking on Kings 1. That's why it didn't look familiar. But this is what I, the one I was supposed to read, apparently. Um, so I guess Kings 2 would be book 12, unless I misread yesterday. But I've been seeing a lot of 12 lately, too. 12, 19, 12, 19, like a.m. and p.m. Anyway, um... Death of Death of Jorham J O R Jor Joram J O R A M of Israel line uh, fourteen nine fourteen this would be Kings two chapter nine verse fourteen Jehu son of Jehoshaphat son of Nimshi formed a conspiracy against Joram. Joram, with all Israel, had been besieging Ramoth Gilead against Hazael, H-A-Z-A-E-L, king of Aram, A-R-A-M, but had returned to Jezreel, J-E-Z-R-E-E-L, to be healed of the wounds of the Aramines. Maybe this is like ancient Armenians. I don't know. A-R-A-M-E-A-N-S. Uh, the wounds the Aramines had inflicted on him in the battle against Hazael, H-A-Z-A-E-L, king of Aram, A-R-A-M. Jehu said to them, if this is what you really want, see that no one escapes from the city to report in Jezreel. Then Jehu mounted his chariot and drove to Jezreel, where Jorham lay ill, and Ahaziah, A-H-A-Z-I-A-H, king of Judah, had come to visit him. The watchman standing over the tower, oh, so this is like the Jehovah's Witnesses. They have those watchman towers. There's a big one by me, and there's a big one across the water from me in Brooklyn. Maybe that's what I was supposed to be taking a picture of that time. They made me take a picture of, I thought, the river and Brooklyn, but I didn't know what in Brooklyn when I was at the gas station the day I said that cop was a dead man walking. I don't know. Um, the watchman standing on the tower in Jezreel saw the troop of Jehu coming and reported, I see chariots, Joram said. Um, I'm sorry, I see chariots. Joram said, get a driver and send him to meet them and to ask whether all is well. So a horseman went out to meet him and said, the king asks, is everything all right? Jehu said, what does it matter to you how things are? Get behind me. So this is like, get devil, get thee behind me. The watchman reported to the king, the messenger has reached them but it's not returning. Joram sent a second horseman who went to them and said, the king asked, is everything all right? What does it matter to you how things are? Jehu replied, get behind me. The watchman reported, he has reached them, but is not returning. The driving is like that of Jehu, son of Nimshi. He drives like a madman. 
Hitch up my chariot, said Joram. And they hitched up his chariot. Then Joram, king of Israel, and Ahaziah, king of Judah, set out each on his own chariot to meet Jehu. They reached him near the plot of ground of Naboth, N-A-B, or Naboth, N-A-B-O-T-H, the Jezreelite, J-E-Z-R-E-E-L-I-T-E. When Joram recognized Jehu, he asked, is everything all right, Jehu? Jehu replied, how could everything be all right as long as all the harlotry, H-A-R-L-O-T-R-Y, and sorcery of your mother, Jezebel, continues? Joram reigned, R-E-I-N-E-D, about and fled, crying to Ahaziah, treason, Ahaziah, but Jehu had drawn his bow and he shot Joram between the shoulders so that the arrow went through his heart and he collapsed in his chariot. Then Jehu said to his adjutant, A-D-J-U-T-A-N-T, so I guess that's like an adjunct, like an assistant, uh, Bidkar, capital B-I-D-K-A-R, take him and throw him into the plot of ground in the field of Naboth, the Jezreelite, for remember, when you and I were driving teams behind Ahab, his father, the Lord delivered this oracle against him. As surely as I saw yesterday the blood of Naboth and the blood of his sons, oracle of the Lord, I will repay you for it in that very plot of ground, oracle of the Lord. So now take him and throw him into this plot of ground in keeping with the word of the Lord. Death of Ahaziah of Judah. Seeing what was happening, Ahaziah, king of Judah, fled toward Beth Hagan. So it's B-E-T-H hyphen H-A-G-G-A-N. Only the B is capitalized. Jehu pursued him, shouting, him too. They struck him as he rode through the pass of Gur, G-U-R, near Iblim, I-B-L-E-A-M. But he continued his flight as far as Megiddo, capital M-E-G-I-D-D-O, and died there. His servants brought him in, in a chariot to Jerusalem, and they buried him in his grave with his ancestors in the city of David. In the 11th year of Joram, son of Ahab, Ahaziah became king over Judah. So I guess the person that became king was only 11 years old. This is what, kind of what it sounds like. Um, in any event, <laughs> uh, he, somebody was killed and somebody else became king over Judah. Death of Jezebel. Jehu came to Jezreel. And when Jezebel heard of it, she shadowed her eyes, adorned her hair, and looked down from her window. So she tried to get cute. As Jehu came through the gate, she cried out, Is all well with you, Zimri? Wait, is all well, you, Zimri? Capital Z-I-M-R-I, murderer of your master? Jehu looked up to the window and shouted, Who is on my side? Who? At this, two or three eunuchs so the eunuch is a person that's been castrated two or three eunuchs looked down toward him throw her down he ordered they threw her down and some of her blood spurted against the wall and against the horses jehu trod so he galloped over her jehu trod over her body so with the horse he went over he walked over her stomped on her and after eating and drinking he said Attend to that accursed woman and bury her, for she was the daughter of a king. But when they went to bury her, they found nothing of her but the skull, the feet, and the hands. They returned to Jehu, and when they told him, he said, This is the word of the Lord. This is, I'm sorry, this is the word the Lord spoke through his servant. 
Elijah, the Tishbite, in the confines of Jezreel, the dog shall devour the flesh of Jezebel. The corpse of Jezebel shall be like dung, so shit, in the field of the confines of Jezreel, so that no one can say this was Jezebel. And then in, in like another kind of print, so I don't know if this is a synopsis of their own or what this is, it says... Um, 9, 1 to 13, Elisha carries out the commission the Lord gave Elijah in Kings 1, 19, 16. Those are two numbers we always see too. See note, 2 Kings 3, 1 through 9, 13. Yeah, these are all, all our numbers. 9, 7 through 10, the author has Elisha's. So sometimes they say Elijah and sometimes they say Elisha. Maybe these were two different people, but both names are Elijah, as far as I know. The author of Elisha's emissary expand considerably. The speech of Elisha told him to deliver by adding the same type of prophetic indictments and sanctions as were invoked on previous occasions against the dynasties of Jeroboam, J-E-R-O-B-O-A-M, 1 Kings 14, 10 through 11 of Basha, B-A-A-S-H-A, 1 Kings 16, 3 through 4, and of Ahab himself, 1 Kings 21, 21 through 24, uh, 9, 14 through 11, 20. Death pervades this section. The dynasty founded by Omri, capital O-M-R-I, Kings 1, 16, 23, drowns in a bloodbath, taking numberless others along with it. The scenes are in three parallel sets of three. So that's like three, three. And death comes in threes is what, um, is what, it, sa what it says without saying it completely. It just says death comes in parenthesis one. But the, my, the first thing I thought of was death comes in threes. And here's all these threes. Um, to Joram of Israel, Ahab's son. To Ahaziah of Judah, his son-in-law. And to Jezebel the Baalist, B-A-A-L-I-S-T, queen mother of Israel. Then to 70 descendants. So here's 70 again. Like, I'll be back for you in 70 years. And here's 70 descendants of Ahab to 42 relatives of Ahaziah. So 70 and 6, here we go with 13 again. Right, 70, 7, and 42, 6 is 13. So I think this all comes back to the 13 pieces of Osiris that Queen Isis found. Um, anyway, let me, let me read this line again so it makes sense because I'm, I'm probably going to confuse everybody with my, <laughs> my uh, little additions here. So then to 70 descendants of Ahab, to 42 relatives of Ahaziah of Judah, and to numerous Baal, B-A-A-L, worshippers, finally to Jehu of Israel, to the blood royal of Judah, and to Athaliah, the Baalist queen mother of Judah, and last of the Amrits. So death came to all those people. Then it says, 922, harlotry and sorcery, both terms are metaphors ref referring to Jezebel's worship of the foreign god Baal, B-A-A-L. So she was worshiping a false god. Um, this is not okay. False gods are not okay. False prophets are not okay. And this is why God keeps trying to get you to um, remove yourself from the collective consciousness. So when I say like he doesn't want you in certain groups or whatever on Facebook, it's not that we're not allowed to use social media. I mean, obviously, you know, we have to be allowed. That's how I speak to you. That's how other beings of light, you know, communicate with one another, with you and with each other and vice versa. Um, but it's these groups, for example, where there are negative people you can't keep letting that energy get on you. Once you've been cleared, like that prayer I read the other day, repeatedly I said, 
you know, help us to be removed from the collective consciousness and to, you know, for any negativity coming from it to be blocked from us and any that we've already absorbed to, you know, dissipate from us. That was the reason for that. Um, so this is why you're supposed to, again, like Archangel Sandalphon says, get with people of a like or higher vibration. Surround yourself with that. No more low vibe, dark vibe, gray vibe um, beings in, you know, around you, in your surroundings. And if you do find yourself, you know, uncontrollably around some, clear your energy. That's why we always see over and over again, clear your energy, heal your energy. Okay. So with that, again, um, I will say... What am I going to say here? May all discordant energies influencing any beings of light throughout all existence in all aspects across all dimensions, space and time to infinity and beyond be removed, 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 continue to be removed, removed, removed and fall away. Fall away, fall away. Ask this of all of the highest beings of light. The God King Osiris himself, the goddess King Isis herself, all of the archangels, angels, fairies, any and all high vibration beings of light, our ancestors, the Akashic elders, the divine temples, the galactic federation of light, all beings of love, life, truth, and wisdom, and each being of light's higher self, each being of light's higher self, each being of light's highest self. I ask this of you. And in the highest good of all beings, I entrust this intention to be carried out with joy now and in the aspects of all existence, all time, all space, all dimensions to infinity and beyond. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so it is. And it is done. Amen. And with that, namaste, angels, for now. <laughs>